Hey, how you all doing? Welcome to this numbers tutorial. In this numbers tutorial, I'm going to go through conditional formatting. Um, I've done pages and numbers basic um, tutorials before, and I was quite surprised how many people asked if I was if I could carry on doing some of the tutorials around pages and numbers. I use Excel in my everyday life, and I do like to try and replicate sometimes what I do in Excel to what I do in um, numbers. Um, so um, so yeah, let's get let's get on and do some conditional formatting. So I'm just going to select a blank canvas here, left hand side. I'm going to select choose, and this will take us into numbers itself. Like I said, I have done a basic numbers tutorial, so go and um, go and check that out. Although there were some issues with the um, with the volume, a few people have complained about that, but nevertheless. Okay, so. Um, this is what it'll look like if we use a, if we choose a, a basic sort of canvas, and we can add rows, uh, columns by um, taking this little anchor point bottom left hand side, left clicking or clicking on your mouse, and just dragging it up or down. And likewise with columns, you could do the same, um, drag left or to the right. You can also just click on the um, respective little. Um, button as well and that will add or remove columns for you so I suppose a lot of what people um, I like to do things sort of methodically when I use Excel and numbers and um, one of the th first things I like to do is when I'm setting up tables or graphs or whatever is um, orientate my page now obviously numbers a little bit different to Excel so all I'm going to do is press command and P on my keyboard and it gives me the print view layout. So here I'm just gonna um, just select my, um, on the right hand side in the inspector, select my page orientation and make that landscape and that's the simplest way to do that. And um, there's a little checkbox here that you can select fit or unfit. So it just fits it to the page or you can custom scale it with this little slider here, which is, um, which is quite effective as well. So I always think, I think Excel's a, an, an excellent or the best pro productivity um, tool going, in my opinion. Um, but numbers is not far behind, and some of the things that you can do with numbers that you can't do in Excel, and vice versa, um, but some of the things we are referring to numbers, some of the things that you, you, you can't, you can do in numbers, and you can't do in Excel, um, are, are things like this, you know, like, like the things that you think should be quite simple. So when I'm happy with this view and I'm happy how yeah, my table's set up, I'm just going to click done. I'm not happy how yeah, my table's set up in the mo at the moment because I'm going to change it anyway. But anything that you do with the table, instead of doing direct on the table, apart from typing and stuff, you do over here in your inspector. Um, so I'm just going to set up um, the table. Let's call it... Um, Let's call it passes. Let's do a, a pass. I, I, it, I'm using this because I, I can't think of anything else to 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 do. So I'm just going to do sort of um, say let's say visitor passes or staff passes, um, and let's imagine our staff passes are different colours and their renewal dates are different, and um, and by using conditional formatting triggers. Um, so that's all it is, conditional formatting, you're just setting uh, a rule or a couple of rules that trigger um, a format type within any given cell. Okay, so um, the way to set up the tables, you, you've got these predefined tables on the right hand side over here, like so. Um, or you can sort of make your own. All I would suggest is if you're going to make your own, is you, um, I'm just going to delete that column for now. I'm going to work out how many columns I need firstly. In fact, let's set up the table first. So this top row here, I've selected it all, and I want that to be a specific color. So I'm going to go to my cell because I'm dealing with the cell colors. Now, people make this big mistake. I see people using um, numbers when I'm out and about at work. I see people using numbers and getting a little bit frustrated with it and then reverting back to Excel um, for simple Simple mistakes, and it's always user error. So I want to change the color of this. People necessarily uh, automatically just go to here for some reason, because if this is on no fill, let's say, for instance, um, they don't see the color in this box, or they look at this box and 
suggest or seem to think that they have to use a colour out of this box. Um, so then they go back to, just select the table again, to this border and then try and change the colour of the border thinking they're going to change the colour of the, the cell within it and they're not going to. So I'm just going to click down here, this drop down in the cell and click colour. And then once this is blue, see this little part here is blue. When it's blue, that means I can select a colour. Now this is a bit of a um, a bit of a pain, this one, because I'm always doing it, trying to change the colour and font colour, and this is not selected blue. So I'm just going to choose a blue down here from my colour swatch, my colours. Obviously you can use all sorts of colours. I'll just add a favourite, got this favourite blue here that I'll, I'm going to use. Um, and then I'm going to select the text colour within it. And I want my text colour within that blue to be white. And I also want it to be 11 point big. Um, the, the font, I'm not too fussed about the font, just be that font. And you can update your table styles here, but that's for another tutorial. So I'm not going to mess about with that now. Um, so now I've got this table. What I'm going to go is I'm going to go to this table now. I'm going to go across to the right and select plus. So now if I selected another table, let me just remove this. I could easily go back to this table and this is the table that would be set up. So I know in here, my text is going to be white. So let's have a look at this like so. Name. Um, now I can't spell, can't type name. Then we're gonna go surname. Then we're gonna go um, pass type. And then we will go renewal date. And then let's go remarks. So this is the table that I want set up for my staff. Um, Joe, Jodo instead of John Doe. For no other reason than it's it's silly. And then I, I only want these um, these rows in my um, in my table. So now I'm going to press Command and P and go back to my table and set up via the scale. This is how big I want my, um, or you can just click fit and it'll fit it that way, but I don't want to. I want to make my table this big like this, so it's this big on my page. I'm gonna click done. I'm just gonna zoom in just 250% just so you can see what, let's make it bigger, 200% just so it's easy for you to see what I'm doing on the page here. So pass type, let's have a, um, this is where conditional formatting comes into it. Like I said, conditional formatting is just a, um, a trigger that you're going to use in order to change the color of the cell. So I'm gonna to go to cell because that's what we're referring to. We're not referring to the text, we're referring to the cell. So I'm gonna to go to the cell and what I'm going to want to do first and foremost is let's make a pop-up menu. Now in, <clears throat> in Excel, conditional formatting and pop-up menus they're very straightforward, really, really straightforward um, if you know what you're doing. And I suppose likewise in numbers, bro, I just think in numbers, um, the sort of self-discovery discovery element that, that um, or, or self-learning that, that most of us have to do often is much easier than, um, than, than I find it in Excel. So I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to make a pop-up um, and I'm just going to select, select in the cell of my inspector, keep my cell selected go to cell of my inspector, drop down this data format, and I'm gonna make that a pop-up menu. So now <clears throat> I get this option pop-up, I get item one, two, and three. So I'm just gonna rename my items by double-clicking item one, and let's call that a green pass. Let's call this a, um, a blue pass. Let's call this a orange pass. Okay, so we've got three types of passes, green, blue, and orange. So now I can select the um, select the drop down menu and select either um, either or, or whatever color that I want. But we want the cell to change color, and that's where conditional formatting comes in to match the color of the text. What we also want to do is we're not happy with it sat on green, blue, or orange per permanently. So we can, this little start with first item, we can start with blank. So if we was to um, use this menu now, 
we just have undone that. Um, if we was to use this menu now, we could actually start with none on the drop down. We could go to none and then it would start with a blank. But let's say, for instance, we wanted the word select in there to make people select from this drop down menu that we've created. We could start with first item, click add, and then type select. Now, obviously, it's going to start with the first item, which is green. So I'm just going to click off it and then drag this select up to the top, like so. And now our first item will be select. So if we used to copy this formatting into the cell below by just dragging all the cells below, by dragging this little yellow anchor, which we'll copy all the formatting, it will all default to select. Okay, so we've got the same thing in all of the um, in all of the boxes. Now, conditional formatting. <clears throat> select the box with our pop-up menu. I'm going to select conditional formatting. I'm going to select add add rule, and then I'm going to select text because in our in our box we've got text. So select text, and the text is. So we've got a number of triggers here is not, starts with, ends with, contains, does not contain. So they're quite straightforward actually. And all I want to do is if this text is a certain text, so we can click this little box here and put a formula in, but we're just dealing with text. If this text is green, then what we want, we have predefined, if we click select this bold here below, we have predefined um, text that we can use or predefined fills, but I want a custom style. So my custom style, here is the text. Remember, I've selected it, so I'll make it blue. So I'm choosing green text, and it gives you a preview just here at the top. And then I'm going to select the fill by selecting the right-hand side and select green. So that's what my green text will look like. Let me just close these styles here, click done. So now if I select green, my text will become green. It won't on these others, obviously, because I've not copied the formatting that I've used for this box, but we'll do that soon. So that's with the green. That's how it works, okay? So let me show, and you can see here in the inspector in our cell, we have one rule um, applied to this cell. So let's show highlighting rules, and let's add another rule. Let's go to text text is um, orange so this time you notice I've not made a capital letter on the front of orange but it doesn't matter even though my drop down menu is a capital letter it doesn't matter it will still recognize that it's orange not like Excel if you're going to use in conditional formatting a word it has to be the exact word the exact same spelling um, so we're going to go to custom style change this to um, to orange text and then we're going to go to orange fill and then I'm going to add rule and we text is this time it's going to be blue select the bold scroll down to the bottom custom style select the text which is blue select the fill which is blue And then I'm going to click done. Move this. I can just move this over here and leave it there if I want to. But sometimes it hides some of your things in your inspector. So now in this box, if I select blue, it will change to blue. Orange will change to orange. And select will just be blank. And I want to copy this format in with this little yellow an uh, orange anchor point. And drag that all the way down. So it doesn't matter what box now I select. I've got the pop-up. And I've also got the highlighted or conditional rules that go with that pop-up. And you can see here in the text that I've got selected or multiple text that I've got, uh, cells that I've got selected, I have three rules applied right here. And I can show the rules by, um, by clicking show rules, click done. And if I want to change them, change them. Okay, so now renewal date. <coughs> First, I'm going to select how I want my date whenever I'm messing, playing with dates. I'm going to select how I want my date to be viewed. So I'm going to go keep the cell selected up here. So I have a cell here. Select cell in my inspector. Drop down the data format. And you can see 
I'm going to go to date and time. The time, I don't want the time viewing. I don't want the time showed. So you could do the same with a date. You could show no, de no date, but show the time. But the date, I just want it in this format. The day, the month, the year. The day, the numbered day, not the actual day as in Thursday. Um, but I just want the day and I want it in short form like so. So that now, it doesn't matter how I type my date, it will come like this. So if I typed the 02nd of April 2017, it would default to the date format shown in the top right hand side of our inspector there. Okay, so I'm just going to remove that date. Um, so we can copy this formatting down to the other um, the other cells as I showed you before. But let's do some um, some conditional formatting with dates in mind. So I'm going to select conditional formatting. I'm going to add a rule. I'm going to go to dates. So what I want to do there's again there's lots of triggers yesterday, today, tomorrow, and you can um, edit those triggers in the range of after date, before date. So you can do quite a lot with dates in here as well. But I want in the next let's say 30 days, so we can see. When these passes, I've just typed in 30 here, 30 days. You could change this to weeks, months, quarters, or years. Keep it days. So I want to see when our passes are, because we're going to type in our renewal date here. When our passes are up for renewal, it will show you 30 days in advance so you can act upon something early. Okay? So, and I just want, um, I want to use for this when our passes are 30 days out I want to just use yellow fill okay and then I'm gonna so let me show you first I'm gonna select done so now if I do the 30th of April it will default to 30th of April 2017 to the date and format that I've sent here and 30 days out because it's 2nd of April today it's less than 30 days out so this will show in yellow, highlight in yellow to remind me I need to um, I need to update this pass here or 30 days time that pass will need updating. Okay, so I'll go back to this cell and show the highlighting rule. Now I'm going to add a rule and let's go dates in the next and then let's go 20 days. So if it's 20 days, I want it to be an orange fill and then let's add another rule. Let's go dates in the next 10 days. I want it to be a red fill okay so we get a yellow fill orange fill and red fill we could even make this a green fill just so we've got like a um, a traffic light system red amber green green amber red whatever okay so now in theory I click done in theory if I go if I make this the 20th of April because we're 10 20 days in um, press select it will go green. Let me go back to that cell, apologies. But that's 30 days out if we look. So why is it still selling green? Okay, let's try 10 days out. So on the 10th of April, I'm just gonna type right over the top, it's still green, why is this? Okay, so let me go back to that cell, three rules, show highlighting rules. This is simply, when you're messing with dates, it will only trigger um, based, so this 30 days, will be our first priority trigger. 20 days is less than 30, so you won't see that trigger. So we just have to reorganize them. So we have to put 10 at the top, 20 in the middle, and you'll see right away, my 10 has changed to red. My 20 now, if I make it 20, 20th of April, it's within 20 days, it will go to orange. Then I'll go to 30th of April, it will go to green. So these triggers will then, um, will then, um, apply the cells um, for the cell and again we can just drag that cell down you notice it goes 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 all the way down and that's just to re if you want to rearrange the um, the dates but that's the way it is um, so I make this 20th of April but if we made this 30th of April 2018 you notice with a year out, so it'll it'll stay white. Okay, so that's his um, conditional formatting. Just remember on these quite important. If you look at the rules that we have, 
our triggers in the correct order when we're messing with dates. And then here, when we're selecting our styles, selecting our custom styles, just use the text and the, um, and the colors. Um, I will go on to using, um, using formula within numbers at a later date and using charts. I suppose charts will be my next one. Um, so that looks quite cool and they're quite easy to use as well. So I hope this conditional formatting has helped you out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Um, thanks a lot for watching.